Hi, everybody. Really? Welcome back to another exciting installment of our Evolution uh, Community Chats with the loyalty card tied in with that as well. And today I am joined by someone I've known for many, many years, Tim Rycroft. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Roy. And viewers, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much indeed. Yourself? Yeah, good. All good. Good, good. So um, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. The reason I know Tim is Tim's partner or long suffering partner. No, I'm joking. Um, is Michelle that many of you will know is the branch partner here at Evolution and kind of keeps me in check. And I'm sure at home keeps you in check, Tim. Am I right? A hundred percent. You wouldn't say anything other than, would you? No, indeed not. <laughs> okay. So we're not here to talk about, um, obviously Michelle and you, et cetera, et cetera. But um, we, we're here today to talk about Tim's business um, that's been going if i'm right nearly two years now correct yeah yeah um so tim has been uh sort of working hard like we did when we first started 10 years ago getting his business going so tim uh, without further ado tell us who you are what you are what you can do and and why we're having a chat today cool so uh what we are we're tjr ventilation solutions limited um, the purpose of the business is to assess via survey and repair and uh, upgrade ventilation with the target of preventing mold and condensation within residential properties. So we do that via, uh, as I say, the start point of surveying a property, understand what's happening, have a look at how we might be able to help, put that all together in a, in a report and a proposal and kind of work with the landlord or private residents uh, as, as and when it, it applies. I think that's interesting you say there, the landlord and private residents. So I think recently in the press, um, I say recently, certainly over the last 12, 18 months, there's been quite a bit of, um, I suppose, negative um, sort of media news about mould and mildew in a lot of the social housing that's going on. Uh, are you involved in sort of correcting that, helping that out? We have some big contracts on social housing. So we're, uh, yeah, constantly being being uh, involved in the resolution for mould condensation within the social housing sector. So, yeah, we do a lot of that. So generally, Tim, I mean, what what are the kind of, I mean, pick out black mould in a house. Um, a lot of people kind of say, oh, it's just the tenants not ventilating the, the, the bathroom properly or um, they switch the extractor fan off. Uh, as I've done, I mean, if you remember, was it just over a year ago now, I did that video in a property that we'd taken aback and, and it was literally the extractor had just been turned off, hadn't it? Um, yeah and that the ceiling had gone black. Um, what generally is the, co I mean, what are you finding? What sort of things should people be doing to stop that? What are you finding is the biggest cause of these things? Uh, well, look, the beginning part is about having an adequate supply of ventilation. So yeah. the first the first check is, is there ventilation there? So part of what we do, which is a little bit different to uh, other people in this field, we actually measure the amount of air that's passing through any existing ventilation. So we put what's called an anemometer over uh, wherever possible over the extractors. Um, whatever the system is, we'll try and check it because there are a lot of uh, bits of equipment that just simply don't perform. So they're not doing what they should be. So, so you kind of got that on the one side and it's very important that the tenant slash owner of the property does ventilate um, because they are complementary. Okay. So again, where you're talking about extractors not working, I mean, you give me some advice when, whenever we do a property check uh, before sort of, or during inspections and so forth, Stuart, I know quite regularly, we'll just take a piece of tissue paper and make sure the vent is working. And quite often it, it is working, uh, but it's very easy to find out. So um, from a survey point of view, is that something that's worth relying on or do you think we need to go a bit further sometimes? I think as a first port of call, um, the visual is, is, a good, is a good a method as any because you're looking around you anyway. So yeah. is the fan switched on? Is there mould? Is there condensation? Are the triple vents open? Yeah. Um, does the window do the... Wi I reckon eight out of ten people I meet are not aware that some, some windows have uh, sort of a double trickle vent on them. Yeah. So you've got the locking latch, but you can also open them fractionally yeah. uh, and lock them with a second latch. And, and that can be, I've, I've seen uh, a couple of people almost in tears who live on ground floor uh, to, in London, this is too scared yeah. to open their windows. 
Uh, and when you show them that, they're over the moon. Yeah, just simple they thing. They'll have a little bit of air. Okay, so a couple of good points there then. So um, make sure your extractor is actually extracting, I suppose. And yep. as I say, the, the easy way we very quickly check it is a bit of uh, toilet paper or kitchen towel just to see if it holds that. So that should, it's not necessarily saying it's it's removing the right amount of moisture, but we know at least it's, it's doing something, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure the trickle vents, if they've got them, so right above the top of the window frame bit, you've got yeah. other vents, you can have those open. And I think, as you've just said there, um, you can very easily and very securely have the actual window opening, open just a jar, as we would call it, a um, couple of millimetres, and that's just enough to let air flow. Do you think if you've got the extractor working and they've done that, they've got the trickle vents and they've opened the window, the other thing I was told as well is when you're using a bathroom or a shower room, don't leave the door open. 100%. So air will move through the path of least resistance. So right. If, if you think of a, a window ajar or closed or just the trickle vent open yeah. and then compare that space to the amount of space that an open door has, it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave the wet room, so the kitchen and or the bathroom, and it's going to travel out of that doorway and it's yeah. going to try to spread through the whole property. Now, the way that it works is, is surprisingly simple in that the moisture you create in the wet area if it's not got rid of, be that manually or mechanically, mm -hmm. so manually opening the window, which is not so easy this time of year, yeah. mechanically Cold. through, a little bit chilly, um, yeah. or mechanically through extractors or similar equipment. If that's not done for whatever reason, it's going to leave the wet room, it's going to try and equalise through the property, yeah. and then it will gravitate to the coldest parts. Which is not and, one of the rooms? Normally, bedroom. Well, this is not exclusive. No, of course. Um, but normally, bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, I use myself as an example. Most people, or or me, I sleep in a cooler bedroom. Yeah. So, so the bedroom is a colder spot. So the moisture will gravitate towards the bedroom. Yeah. If you narrow that comment down slightly, and then you just think the outside wall of the bedroom is colder than the inner walls, yeah, it will gravitate to the outside wall. Yeah. If you, if you narrow that comment down a bit further again, people will see condensation on the window. And that's the start of the process. Right. So that is that a te is that like an immediate telltale sign? If you've got moisture yeah. in the windows, something's either not working properly or needs to be adjusted with how you are using the property, I guess. Hundred, yeah. Look, there's, there's interaction in terms of how you live. So people, we, we've all done it, but people yeah. will leave... Uh, wet washing in areas yeah. around the home and, and I say this to people all the time if you've got black mold in your property and you are creating moisture whenever you're creating moisture cooking bathing washing cups of tea making toast whatever it is that you're doing that's that's creating boiling potatoes anything that you're doing if that moisture is not got rid of it's going to track and head to the places where you know you're the resident, you're the person in the property, yeah. it's going to go to where the mould is and, and it's feeding it. So if you, don't, if you don't take away the food source, the moisture, be that, as I say, mechanically or manually somehow, then, then that mould will only ever get worse. So somebody also said to me that what's worth having, um, and again, you can quote me on this, um, you can buy those kind of just the, the traps. So the yep. pots are about, I suppose, about so big, aren't they? And they put them on the windowsill and they can collect water. Is that worth having? 100%. If you've got a problem, yep. um, that that will remove moisture from the air. So, yes, that's good, but it's not removing the room. Yeah, it's yeah. only really a short-term solution, isn't it, I suppose? It's a sticky plaster on a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not removing the root cause. And the root cause is that moisture in the wet rooms is not being removed. So that's your root cause. Your, your moisture creation is not being taken out of the property. But in terms of mitigating it, anytime the windows open is good time. Anything that collects moisture, so those little traps, yeah. uh, dehumidifiers, they're all, they're all good to use. <clears throat> they're not really long-term solutions, no. um, but they are solutions to try and remove moisture out of the air. Do you, do you think we all become a bit complacent? So let, let's look at this just from a normal residential property. Could be a homeowner, for example, because I know I had it on mine. 
and you just kind of you go in your bathroom, you switch your light on, the fan comes on at night, and you think, oh, dear, it's too loud, turn it off. And then the next day you get up and have a shower, and I know I'm particularly on the setup at my home, um, don't tend to put the light on because quite often in the morning, the sun's literally glaring through the, the ensuite window. Um, so I, when we do put the fan on, you think, oh yeah, that's working. We're not testing these enough. We're not, I mean, how long would you expect a fan to last under a normal four beds attached family home condition? I, twist it on its head, Roy. I think most fans come with five year warranties. Um, oh, so good thinking. Yeah. And, yeah. That's one way looking at it. Yeah, I mean, look, all of those systems are what called intermittent. Yeah. So an intermittent fan, cooker hood is an intermittent fan. It relies on the user, you, yeah. to turn the fan on, to yeah. turn the fan off. In terms of what we do, so we're only visiting properties where there's a problem. Yeah, I won't work with those fans for the reasons you've just described. I cannot guarantee that Mr. and Mrs. Smith are going to turn the light on yeah. when they use the... Uh, when they use the bathroom or, or, or yeah so we, don't do, so we only work with equipment that is constant running right we don't interact with it they have humidistats built into the equipment so they will run a slow trickle in the background all the time so there's always oh. a small slither of air being moved yeah creates a negative air pressure in the wet room so yeah. there's always air being drawn through albeit very slowly and those those fans uh, and systems will have humidistats built into them so when they taste hum humidity above a certain threshold they'll yeah. automatically move into a boosted state so for okay. for a rented uh, landlorded property definitely re regardless of who you use to install them that is a way to go because you remove the responsibility away from the tenant. Yeah. To the I mean, I, I, I've often said, I don't understand why on the bathrooms, on the en suites that you have that overriding switch. Yeah. It's, it's not even a fuse switch. It's just a switch to turn it on and off. I don't, yeah. I, me personally, I don't get it. I don't understand why it's there. And as you quite rightly said there, people can then control it and shut it off. Um, and the fans and do. The fans that you're talking about remove, well, they do their job properly. That, that, that's it in a yeah. nutshell, isn't it? it? It will work when it needs to. And in, interestingly then, that would explain then why on a few of the modern properties that I'm seeing now, they've got the little white, sort of, like a little, I suppose like a thin smoke alarm it looks like on the ceiling. And yeah. you kind of, you're hearing it running along and you switch the, the light on and all of a sudden, bang, it's coming on even more. Is that one of yours or? So, yeah, so that'll be one of two things. That'll be an MVHR. So right. that's like a whole house. So those see, they're called a ceiling valve that, that yeah. you're talking about. Um, they will be, the idea of that system is that the property is highly sealed. Right. So they're well insulated. The windows are, are very well sealed. And, and very simply, they supply air into the dry rooms. They, yeah. So they'll filter the air coming in and they will push air into the dry room. And then in the wet room, they should be balanced in such a way that they are extracting the same amount of air. So you've got a continuous flow of air through the property. Yeah. The way the air will move, it's called the Coandra effect, and it will grab the contaminants as it's moving. So the, the wet rooms will be removing the moisture. They'll be re removing things like the volatile VOCs, They'll be removing cooking smells. They'll be removing all those contaminants that you don't want in the home yeah. continuously. And again, those systems can be boosted via a light switch. So, so what you've described. Yeah. That's kind of the absolute Rolls-Royce system that is being put into a lot of new build. Yeah. There's a kind of a halfway product that, that's also very good. It's called an MEV, um, which is a uh, similar system but it's a bit more simple. It just extracts in the wet rooms. Yeah. And the idea is that you have a ceiling valve. There'll be it will be set up speed wise according to the size of the house. Yeah. And it will be drawing air through trickle vents and passive ventilation through the dry rooms, through the, the hallway into the wet room and out on a constant okay. basis. So the point of that system is that air is entering the property entering the wet room and leaving the property. When you go back to the intermittent system that, that we were talking about, those fans might only get used for an hour a day. So right. the property's kind of still. Yeah. So there's no real air movement. 
Okay. So, so the moisture can track around and yeah. move through the property much, much easier. And that's why people get problems. Ah. So anybody that is watching this or listening to this, I think you need to take effect. First job for, I would say to me, go and grab a bit of toilet roll and check your vents are working for a start. Anything that is... I suppose, really, Tim, would we say anything five years and plus, particularly 10 years and plus, you probably find it's not really doing the job it's meant to be doing anymore? It's very possible. And the only way of fully knowing is, is to test, is to put an, a, a calibrated anemometer over them. But the yeah. tissue is, is a good start point. You'll get yeah, that, I mean, that, that's, that's quite, yeah, quite, quite rough and ready to see that it's actually doing something. So... If somebody says, oh, do you know what, I, I don't really know. I, I, I know I always get moisture on my windows and I'm always wiping them down. So to contact you, I can put your contact details obviously on the post anyway, Tim, but you can go in then, you can do a full survey on the property. So be it a rental, be it a homeowner, someone may have just bought a property and suddenly going, I've got this moisture, what's going on? I didn't have it in my last house. You can go in, you can do a full survey on that. So we, we do a, a, a ventilation survey um, not a full survey, but a ventilation. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> uh, a ventilation survey. Yeah, um, and and we're basically going to compare what's going on in the property to what it should be on yeah. uh, current standards. Now, that's not necessarily to say that um, a property would fail because yeah. if it's an older property, current standards may not apply. Yeah. Um, but it's a great start point because what a better place to start than than the current. Uh, regulations which are all detailed in there fab yeah that is um kind of our bible in, in yeah. a sense of reference That's uh, what works yeah. Out, yeah. so yeah but everybody's welcome to give me a call for advice that's no problem uh look us up on the website which is tjrvent.co.uk awesome um, yeah love to hear from people so somebody somebody says to you rings you up say tim just bought a house been in there three months through the winter all i'm getting is moisture on the windows i watched your video uh, can you come and have a look what what's what would be traditionally what would you charge to go and sort of do as you say like a ventilation survey for someone so so we charge 100 pound plus vat for, yeah. for, for that service um that will include obviously the report that will include the advice that will include the recommendations and obviously a quote for, for any works that we propose. Um, yeah, that's kind of how we do it. So any, any normal person ringing up is £100 plus VAT to come and do a survey? Yeah. With a loyalty card? With a with a Evolution loyalty card, I, we're, we're not 50% off that. So Wow. Uh, so so 50, on so pound. 50 quid plus, so that's going to cost somebody £60 to make sure that everything's working right and find out what the best way, because then we'd all probably be, be guilty if, if we think the fan's not working, it's just replacing it with yet another one. Oh, look, you've got a friend popped in. I have. Um, <laughs> benefit of working from home, I do miss mine. But um, so you'll quite happily pop out, give them the right advice, tell them what they've got to do. Don't just think, oh, I need to replace it. I'll pop in and I know there's lots of DIY stores out there. Go and grab one for 60 quid and my friend can swap it over because that may not cure the issue that they've got maybe no and and it's a frustration of mine is that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy people will not believe one of the biggest things people don't believe is that the moisture will track for example from a downstairs kitchen to upstairs into a bedroom right um, so so they struggle with understanding and believing that that moisture will move like that yeah. but it does and and if you put in a cheap fan you can go to screw fix and go and buy a not, not having to go to screw fix here, but you can go and buy a 20 quid, 30 quid fan. And guess what? You'll be still in the same boat. Still in the same. So don't waste that 20, 30 quid, 50 quid, whatever you're going to pay for it. Reinvest that. Grab one of our loyalty cards. Speak to Tim. Get Tim booked in. He'll come out. Have a look at the property for you. Give you a full professional assessment of what, what it's doing what needs to be done and effectively what it's going to cost you so that you are not wasting money. And again, from a rental perspective, we do see it occasionally, Tim, unfortunately, that once that kind of the, the mould and mildew sets in, it's not just a case of, oh, I'll get the bucket of emulsion and paint over. It has to be properly treated, etc., doesn't it? it? Yeah, it's very much worth uh, spending the money to treat it. And a lot of people will use bleach. Yeah. Please don't use bleach. Please. Yeah, I, interesting. Michelle mentioned that a little while ago in the office. I said, "Ah, oh, I'm sure somebody told me use bleach." So not use bleach. No, if you if just do a bit of 
uh, googling on on the internet with with the treatment people bleach basically mows mows it that's how i describe it okay. it will take the surface away so visually you look at it and go oh, that's that great it's gone. but it's not going to kill the root ah. and you may just be spreading the mold is so, that the same then with these kind of in, sorry to interrupt there, in, in Tesco's and Sainsbury's and whatnot, you get these sprays that are like blitz the mould or whatever. Is that a similar kind of bleach product and it won't do the same or? Potentially. I don't, I, I don't quite understand how or why they're allowed to sell some of these things, but, right. but some of them have got bleach product in it. And and the the, the trade manufacturers for, for mould treatments, they, they, yeah, nobody, it's, bleach is a no-no. So... Anybody that's got the issues, don't go and try and treat it. Speak to Tim. Tim will guide you, give you the right advice. Um, if you have got concerns, as we've discussed there, you're seeing black spots, you're seeing condensation on the windows, talk to Tim. Tim will come and do a, uh, and it's not a full survey because you correct to me, but a ventilation survey. Um, and you'll do that half price for anybody with a loyalty cup. Indeed, yeah. Awesome. That's really good. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. Because I think a lot of people do suffer with this. And I think there's a lot of people that probably don't know where to go and what to do. And they're thinking, oh, I don't really want a building survey. It's coming. So it's going to cost me, I don't know, three, four, five hundred pounds. And so for the case of 60 quid, get it done, get it done properly. And then I suppose really from there on in, you could fit a new system. Do you, do you maintain them? Do you do anything yearly, five yearly? What? what, what? Uh, yeah, we, we, we can do, so depending on the system, so extractor fans, I think it's just a, more of a visual inspection, check that they're not covered in dirt and grime. Yeah. Um, if they are, switch them off and, and be careful and just give them a, a wipe out. That's, that's definitely worth doing. Um, the MVHR systems, they need servicing uh, probably every year, 18 months. Yeah. Um, and again, that is well worth doing because if you if you don't do that, what will happen is the filters will get clogged, the unit will, the motor will start struggling and you'll burn, you'll, you'll basically kill the, kill the bit of kit. Well, all that, it, all that really good equipment then is not going to function yeah. properly, is it? Oh, my God. And that's not cheap, by the way. I'm, that's, I'm, a, that's a three, four grand job. Depending on the unit and the size, but yeah, it could easily be anywhere up to that sort of price. So treat it as your car. Yeah. You would service your car. Of course you would. Yeah, absolutely. Because otherwise it, it packs up, costs more money, breaks down. Totally distracted by your woof there. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep her at bay. Yeah, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much indeed, Tim. I really appreciate your time on this one. I'll catch up again with you in a few months, see how you're getting on. Any reactions from people that we promoted you to as well? Uh, and again, for anybody watching out there, viewing out there, this isn't just for tenants. This is for your own home as well. It's well worth spending a few quid now. Get it right. Get it done. It'll save you the cost of a decorator and treatment coming back in because you haven't had the fans working. Or, yeah, just, I mean, it, it's kind of a, it's a positive spend, isn't it? It's not wasting money in any way, shape or form. I, I, not, I'm biased, of course, but not <laughs> um it's it's well worth doing and, and just viewers looking at the video check us out take a look on checker trade take have a look on linkedin we put some good stuff on on the link i was gonna say i constantly see your stuff on linkedin um which i think i sit there and go i mean for 25 years nearly 25 years of doing this job i have seen some stuff i mean crikey it, it's quite frightening how i was and like the one we did um where you made the comment um on the house did last year when it's just like you were in this property with two children and you let the ceiling get that bad. Why? And it literally was to just because they turned the extractor off. That extractor, yeah. don't get me wrong, may not be up to the standards that you want to fit. I know. But again, I think, as you say, if you're doing lots of little things, that's only going to help reduce that risk, isn't it? Whereas if you ignore it, it the last well. thing to say, the cost on or the cost of fans sometimes, and, and now it's going to be quite relevant as electricity well, efficiency yeah. of course yeah everything's changing um modern bits uh, modern extractor fans uh, constant run 24 hour 365 will be two or three pound a year per fan is that it that's it so think of it like wow. light bulbs 30 years ago light bulbs were 100 watts and yeah. you kind of sat around them to keep warm because they were <laughs> yeah. through so much energy uh, ventilation equipment is the same Right. successive governments 
have <laughs> have, um, have have basically demanded the manufacturers reduce the costs. Yeah. So so they are very very economical and cheap to run, and it, but, the damage they can cause versus the cost of them. The, it's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah, the cost of uh, of repairing the damage because that can just exasperate. You can end up with wood rot. You can end up with plaster needing redoing, and not just a coat of paint. We're talking like this can get really into the grain of the building, can't it? Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. You don't want it. So yeah. Well, thank you so much indeed, Tim. So viewers, don't forget. Um, Click on the post. Um, we'll put the details for you to reach out to Tim. Um, Going half price on a um, ventilation survey on your property. So it's just fifty pound plus fat, sixty quid. Well worth every penny. I cannot promote this enough. Tim's being totally hounded by his dog, and I think she's just brought you in a, a carrot to play with. So yeah, yeah. Um, I know you're working today, but I'm sure the dog needs a little bit of attention. So I will let you get on. Thank you again, Tim. I really appreciate your time. And um, My pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.